Hi, I'm Joe Eager with Dow Agri Sciences. The next bug we're going to look at uh, is from the New World, and so we're going to use the Ralston and McDonald 1979 key. And this will take you to families of American Phenotomoidea and subfamilies of uh, Phenotomidae. And the main thing with this one, I want to get you to the subfamily. Um, this is a predator, and so I want to make sure everybody recognizes a, a predaceous stink bug. Uh, so if you look at McDonald, uh, Rolson McDonald key, page 190, uh, the first couplet is scutellum covering most of forewings, or scutellum leaving most of forewings exposed, when, uh, even when scutellum attains apex of the abdomen. And you can see, as with the previous bug, the forewings are, are not covered by the scutellum. It's, it's smaller and, and triangular in shape. <coughs> The next couplet, couplet two, uh, asks you if uh, the scutellum has, a, it says scutellum bearing large mesial spine or vertical plate, or the scutellum not so armed. And if you look at this from a side view, you can see that the scutellum is flat, doesn't have a spine or, or a vertical plate of any kind. So it's not a certicord. That takes you to couplet three. Couplet three asks, uh, the choices are metathoracic scent gland orifice near, <coughs> near lateral margin of pleuron or distant from lateral margin of pleuron. And the orifice can be found right here at the base of this, this uh, sulcus. And so it's obviously closer to the legs than it is to the lateral margin of the, of the pleuron. The other part of couplet number three asks you whether the antennae are three segmented or four or five segmented. And you can see, actually, these are five segmented. There's a small segment here that's very hard to see, but here's uh, two, three, four, and five. So it certainly isn't three segmented. It's a, uh, a five segmented antenna. So that takes you to couplet number four. Couplet number four asks you to look at the trichobothria on sternites uh, three to seven uh, and decide whether they're in a large callus located mesad of each uh, adjacent spiracle or whether they're not on a callus. Um, the trichobothria are probably one of the hardest characters to see in these bugs. Sometimes it's not too bad, sometimes it's very, very difficult to see them. Uh, they're paired sensory structures, and there is a, a, a CETA in each one. And if you look at this bug, I'm going to adjust the focus a little bit here because it's, I've got it pretty close up. Here's the spiracle, and the CD are right behind it. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but there are two of them. And there's a little, you can see the, the CETA coming out of this thing here. If you can't find them, Sometimes looking at the bug on an angle and, and trying to see, pick up those, those little uh, sensory hairs coming out of the trichobothria, or the, they are the trichobothria, you, you can see those hairs sometimes. But it's very tricky and, and, and difficult to see. So obviously the trichobothria are not on a large callus. They're, uh, they're uh, just sitting there, not surrounded by any type of callus. And that takes us to uh, couplet number five. Couplet number five, your choices are pronotum extending over the base of the scutellum or pronotum ending at the base of the scutellum. And the base of the scutellum runs right across here. So you can see that the scutellum is not covered by the, the uh, posterior margin of the uh, pronotum. So it's not a tesseratomid, and that takes you to couplet number six. Okay, the next couplet asks whether the tibial spines, if present, are, are confined to the apex of the tibia or whether the tibia bear many spines in addition to those at apex and in addition to CD. And if you look at the tibia on this bug, you can see a lot of fairly fine CD here, no spines, nothing even resembling a spine. So clearly this bug doesn't have spine tibia. So you've got uh, the choice there is uh, couplet number seven. In couplet number seven, your choices are sternite eight exposed in males 
are Pendergrass organs usually present in females and tarsi two segmented. Uh, the Pendergrass, this happens to be a female specimen we're looking at. Pendergrass organs would be a, a, an impression located about here and you can see that this bug doesn't have those. Um, the other character in this cup, but uh, tarsi two segmented or tarsi three segmented, if you look at this bug, it's got one, two, three tarsal segments. Again, that second one being smaller than the, than the other two, but clearly has three tarsal segments. So what you have here is a pentatomid. Okay, if you look at the first couplet on the key to subfamilies of American pentatomidae, it, uh, your choices are either first labial segments stout and extending well beyond buculi or four tibia foliate. And uh, the other option is first labial segment little and large lying between buculi, uh, although often projecting beyond buculi. And four tibia uh, not greatly expanded, whereas in the previous couplet, four tibia uh, uh, dilate or foliate. And you can see on this bug, it's got a really stout first labial segment. Uh, the buculi are reduced, and uh, uh, the rostrum continues to be very stout. This is, is a predaceous bug. This is an asapine. And this, this character of the rostrum is, is very typical. Once you get used to looking at these bugs, you'll, you'll note that this is a lot larger and a lot more stout than the phytophagus bugs. If you remember the one we looked at, uh, the previous bug we looked at, you had the buculi running and, and the rostrum was tucked in between the, the buculi or the, the cheeks. And here it's obviously not. Also with these predators, they usually hold the rostrum out away from the body when they're at rest, whereas a lot of the phytophagus ones have it tucked up uh, a lot closer to the body. So this is subfamily Asopiny, and I think it's, it's pretty important to recognize this subfamily uh, among all the subfamilies of pentatomids. Um, you don't want to stop a shipment because you've got a predator coming in that, uh, you know, predators just aren't the same regulatory concern that a, a phytophagous potential pest would be.